Hello, precious family. It's Pastor Derek and Sir Julia coming your way this week, and I trust God that you have had a beautiful week. Today, we are starting a new series, How to Spot a Marital Scam. I'm sure you don't want to miss this one. It's going to be very educative and very informative. Welcome to the Marriage School with Pastors Derek and Sir Julia Ibrahim Solomon. Here at the Marriage School, we believe it is God's will for you to experience marital bliss at its fullest. And as such, we seek to equip you with the practical tools and resources for a successful marriage. Pastors Derek and Sel Jelia are both ministers of the gospel at Shine Ministries International located in London. They are also published authors of well-known marriage counseling books such as Built to Last and God's Spices for Marriage. Through the marriage school, they share their vast knowledge about the marital landscape. Using the Word of God as their foundation, they provide couples with resources and strategies that prove helpful in navigating the marital waters. So join us this and every Saturday at 6 p.m. GMT on our Facebook page for fresh and new insights into the world of marriage. And as usual, we are blessed to have Pastor Derek here with us. We can't wait to hear what he's got for us. Pastor Derek, you're welcome. Thank you. It's good to have you today again. It's good to be had here again today. How are you doing? I am well by the grace of God. Good. I'm so excited about this topic. How to spot a marital scam. Yeah. So we want to hear what you have for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Please make sure you share it for us. Let it bless somebody. Right. How do you spot a marital scam? There are a lot of people who... Uh, go into marriage and then after they are in it, they realize that they were scammed, they were duped. <laughs> a lot of the times the signs were there but they did not take them seriously and now they have been scammed but it is too late. How do you spot some of these things? One, one, one thing to spot that the marriage will be a rocky marriage when you go into it is that there is physical abuse even when the person has not married you yet. You see, they can grab you, violently push you, violently shout at you, hit you sometimes because uh, 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 you spoke to him in a way you didn't like, uh, he, he didn't, didn't like, like, or she spoke to you in a way uh, um, she didn't like. And then they, they react violently and you think, oh, oh, it's because they are madly in love with you. If you see any slight signs of violence at the beginning, in the relationship stage, at the courtship stage, that is the time to run. You should cancel <laughs> that relationship at once. You know that it is a it's a trap. You are going into it and you will be ruined for life. You'll be ruined for life. So you don't go into a marriage. If even during the courtship, the guy can be violent towards you, it's a scam. That any love is telling you loves you is not true. When you go in there, you will suffer. It will be a prison for you. So watch out and avoid such people. Thank you, Pastor Derek. I do not understand how people equate love with violence. Because if you love somebody, the least thing you want to do is to hurt them. Mm -hmm. So if that is at the beginning of the marriage, mm -hmm. then you have to really, really be careful. Yeah. But do you know that does not really deter some people? No, no, some people don't. Some people still... It's like, oh, he loves to... me because yeah. he bought me ice cream after he slapped me. So, so we'll be fine. You will not be fine. You will not be fine. Don't joke with violence. Don't joke with abuse. If he's hitting you or she's hitting you, once they have not even married you, it's dead. You can be sure that when they get married to you, mm. it's going to double. Mm. Okay, so avoid that. Number two, please. For today. Number two, when one party abhors the other party giving to their own family. Okay? So we are courting. You have your job. I have my job. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you bought a nice bag for your mother. Then I get angry. Mm -hmm. You didn't use my money. You use your own money you to buy angry. something for your mother. And then I get angry. Or, oh, you're going to give something to your brother or your father. And I get angry. Okay, that is a sign that if you marry such a person, you are going to be in big, 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 big trouble. Because they are only caring about themselves. I was counseling a lady and she said that, oh, I, I was courting a guy. And, uh... Uh, 
he, she was talking about going to give some money to her family. And the guy got very, very angry. Don't give, when we marry, what are we going to use for our own well, life? You know, Why are you giving things. your money to your parents? This is and a, that's my parents. And that's, this is a reference. That's a clear. You don't go ahead with somebody who, even when they have not married you, your own money, they don't want to spend on your own family. After they marry you, they will completely capitalize on you and you will not be able to support your family but you know what marriage does not exclude you from your family yeah okay even though you become one flesh with the, whoever this is the family that raised you you cannot just abandon them and no. throw them away so anybody who during course tries to cut you off from your family doesn't want you to spend doesn't want you to have time with your family it's a dangerous person and you, it's a scam waiting to happen you go into it and you see that you 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 have been destroyed so avoid such people rather flow with people who encourage you to be a blessing to your family both either way both side a, a woman who encourages you to be a blessing to your family a man who encourages you to be a blessing to your family that's what you must look out for and even if you become one and um, together with the person you are getting married to mm -hmm. you always have to remember that they picked you from a family mm -hmm. they didn't just pick you from the streets you mm -hmm. are coming from a family yeah and neglecting your family will be a very it is very bad. wrong it's wrong it shouldn't happen at all because God forbid, should anything happen, you will have to run back to the same family. So you mm -hmm. can't cut them off because you want to marry somebody or because your spouse is saying, cut them off. Mm -hmm. Number three, Pastor Derek, please. Uh, number three is when a person proposes to you and they tell you, don't let anybody know that I've proposed to you. Don't let anybody in the church know I've proposed to you. <laughs> don't let anybody in this organization know. Don't let the bosses know. Don't let the colleagues know. Don't let your family members know that focus. Don't let anybody know. Keep it a secret between the two of us. Well, is it is it is it a secret society? Is it an MI5 operation? Is it a covert? Are you just born like <laughs> it's a scam? Most of the times, when a person proposes to you and they tell you that oh, don't let anybody know, let it just be between the two of us for now. It's likely that they've proposed to somebody else and they've told their other party to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So before you realize, six friends who are working together, you've all no, been proposed, proposed to by one man, man and you don't know it. Mm -hmm. Please, proposal is not anything that has to be done at sun, sunset or whatever. It, it should be open. Mm -hmm. Everybody should know that you are in this relationship. So that if, if it will work, it will work. If it will not work, it will not work. But once you hide it, 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 it has so many dangers. It has so many dangers. When you go into the marriage later, you realize that it will not stand the test of time. Because one good thing about exposing your relationship early is that it will it will go through all the attacks, all the checks, all the trials, all the tribulations. So by the time you are able to survive all those things, mm -hmm. you become solid. That when yeah. you go into the marriage itself, you don't yeah. struggle much. But when it is so hidden, all of a sudden your marriage is like hey, 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 hey. So don't, of course, it may not be everybody you want to know because there are some people who you know that they have a bad mind. If if they come a, a, around your legs, they'll mess things up. So you can keep it from one or two people. But to say that, don't let anybody know. It's, it's suspicious. It's a scam. It's usually a scam. Sometimes the person is already married somewhere and, and, and is trying to do this one separately. So please watch out for such things. And you know, Pastor Derek, sometimes when we are saying some of these things, people mm. think it's, it's not real. But oh, this... That's this what thing, that we do. People don't know what we hear. Yeah, so. This thing actually happened where mm -hmm. a Christian brother was in the church and he had proposed to like six or so girls in the church. And the sad thing about it is that he was sleeping with all of them. Mm. And he told this person, don't let anybody do it. He told that person, don't. So all six of them were dating the same and he was sleeping with all of them and they were not telling anybody. By the, time they think, by the time he came out, he had almost finished... Most of the young people I think in the I remember church. That story. Yeah, and the reason is because he kept telling them, "Don't tell anybody. Don't tell it. If you don't expose something, you would. It's very likely it's going to die. But if, like you said, you expose it and it goes through all the attacks and whatever, and it survives, praise the Lord. So if somebody tells you, "Don't tell anybody," please avoid it. You didn't tell me not to tell anybody. No, no, no. I don't have time for that. I have nothing to hide. So. Whoever you tell, is, you don't care. It's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, please. Number four, when the usually is the man who would say that, oh, get pregnant first and then I'll marry you. That's a big mm. scam. That's a big scam. Get pregnant first. I want to know whether you are fertile first because I don't want us to have 
uh, 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 fertility problem. So you get pregnant first and then quickly will sort out and marry. It's a big scam. Okay, marriage and childbirth are two different things. You marry a person because you love them. Okay, you love the person and you marry that person, right? And it's got nothing to do with whether they will be able to give birth or not. If they are able to give birth, praise the Lord. We thank God. Hallelujah. If they are not able to give birth, praise the Lord. We thank God. Hallelujah. You still love them anyhow. If you need to adopt, you will adopt. Whatever you do, you can do to help each other. But you don't marry a woman because of childbirth. So that if, 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 uh, uh, um, She's not able to give birth. Then what do you do? You throw her away. It is wrong. Mm -hmm. The Bible clearly says avoid fornication, which is sex outside of marriage. So that thing, especially if you're a Christian listening to me, you should never accept a man telling you get pregnant first and then I'll marry you. It's unscriptural. It's a scam. And what if you get pregnant and I say she's no longer interested in you? After you got pregnant, you go into an argument or something and say no, he's no longer interested. He moves on. What do you do? You are stuck with the baby. That you didn't plan for, that you don't want. Okay, so make sure you get married first before you get pregnant. It's important. And then, Pastor Larry, straight on, if the person tells me that get pregnant first, mm -hmm. in the dance, so you are trying to tell me that should we have fertility problems and because I know you, yeah, and, and then and then also, should we have fertility problems? You will not value me, you will not marry me, you yes. will not want me, yes. Yeah, so, so I'm only good for babies. Exactly. I'm not good for anything. And what if it shows that um, fertility problems are always the woman's fault? Yeah. It, sometimes it's the man's fault. Sometimes many it's the woman's times, fault. Many times. Many times. Yeah, so, but, but we have that mentality of if a couple cannot have a child, it's a woman. Either the woman has had abortions or she's done something, she's eating her whoop or all those silly things we, we say from, from, from our home country. So, this, are, I mean, it's very, very important that. You don't tolerate some of these things. No, you shouldn't. No, and and we are also not um, items to be tested. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to test you if you are able to give birth or not. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with your couple, but they could take yeah. like two, three years before. Yeah. So you can't just try me a few months, and if I'm not getting pregnant, it, it then I'll leave you and go for somebody else. So you keep trying, 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 yeah. trying, trying, wasting yeah, people's demon. lives like that because it's you want to. It's a demon spirit, my sister. It's a demon spirit. You have time for one more, we can squeeze one one in. Another scam is if you really love me, you let me taste just one. You let me have sex with you. <laughs> if you really love me, you would you would not keep yourself away from me. You, you are not married. You know, Pastor, that usually is the men who say this. Yeah. The, I, I, well, I don't know, but I don't think a woman would come and say, if you really love me, then... Some do. Some do. Some do. Very bad. Yeah, some do. Uh, yeah, but like, if you really love me, you sleep with me. If you, We are not married. So and and sex is not what shows love. Whether you love somebody okay? or not. Sex is never an indicator of love. Otherwise, the sex workers would be in love with them. Yeah, people. sex. Sex <laughs> is just relieving sexual pleasure, sexual tension, and and having sexual pleasure. It's got nothing to do with love. Love means sacrifice. Love means uh, 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 giving. So if you want to show that you love a woman, you rather sacrifice you rather uh, do things that that may tend to cost you but will be a blessing to her mm -hmm. but you don't use sex to sh to prove that you love a, a woman and a woman is not commanded by the Bible to love her husband anyway so she's not supposed to give you a sex in order to prove that she loves you mm -hmm. okay so sisters be very very wary of this scam it's it's out there plenty if you love me you let me sleep with you. if you love me it's a lie it's a lie. Once they sleep with you and they, you get pregnant or something, that's where you know that they didn't love you. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to use you. Keep yourself. Holiness is still in fashion. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Derek. I believe that we are learning something from this series so that we are not scammed. Because marital scam is real. Do not be a victim. And so we come your way again next week. God willing, this Pastor Derek. And sell Julia from the Mary School. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. Bye. Bye bye.